Everyone who lost power over the weekend in North Carolina when two substations were attacked now have the lights back on. Gunfire damaged the facilities. More than 45,000 Duke Energy customers were in the dark, and schools were closed all week in Moore County. Officials say the substations were intentionally targeted, and the FBI is assisting in the investigation. The FBI is also investigating a separate incident in South Carolina. Authorities say someone pulled up to a Duke Energy facility before opening fire and driving away. There were no power outages reported. It's unclear if this was a targeted attack. For a deeper analysis on this, I'm joined by Anurag Srivastava. He is the chairperson and professor at large at Lane Department of Computer Science and Electrical Engineering at West Virginia University. Um, Anurag, so we have these two instance, in, in, uh, instances. They may or may not be related. Um, why is the energy grid so vulnerable? Well, I would say that you know, grid is not designed for these kind of uh, extreme events. We design it for some kind of failure and make it reliable, but not uh, these kind of extreme events. And it will be vulnerable uh, because it's physically exposed, you know, so everything is out there. And uh, not only these kind of events, but also weather events uh, and also cyber attacks. And so what needs to be improved to make these better? So a lot can be done, you know, uh, and there are some efforts already taking place as we see increase in uh, weather events and also cyber events. So I would say that, you know, first thing is reinforcing critical substation. Uh, and, and we need to identify those, which critical assets those are. Second thing, we need to put more sensors and real-time monitoring so that we can send alerts to operators, to police, and uh, and everyone who need to respond to these kind of events. Third, which is most important, is we need to change our thinking, which were initially reliability driven, to resilience driven, design, training, planning, and operation. And and there's a lot in in this you know in this statement because the way we operate and plan our grid right now is all focused on keep supplying the power grid, assuming that few things will fail. It does not take care of these kind of extreme events. And it used to be rare. And Anurag, let me just interrupt for a moment. Is it also, in addition to making them more resilient, is it also the case that these electric facilities or these uh, are done on a state-by-state -state basis? There's no uniform um, uh, regime for hardening these targets. I would say yes. Yeah, so most uh, of these investment to, to make it, you know, more monitored and more reinforced is driven by each utility, and it might be multiple state by, uh, you know, one electric grid operators. And as they go for upgrading these facilities, uh, they, you know, most in most of the cases, they need to go to regulators and ask to increase the, you know, approve this cost so that they can get the bill paid by ratepayers. So it is, it is, it is a little bit different by state by state uh, by grid operators. And and finally, the the most recent infrastructure bill had some money that went towards upgrading the national power grid. How much, um, how important and, and helpful will that be? This will definitely help. I mean, we are talking about uh, biggest man-made machine ever, I mean, the electric grid. Uh, just talking about substation, which uh, had this uh, attack, you know, there are like 55,000 substations. So even with $65 billion of infrastructure bill going towards the grid, it's not enough to, you know, to make the complete grid very, very resilient. But it will definitely, you know, help us uh, in making some of those uh, critical substation and, uh, and community more resilient to these kind of extreme events. All right. Anurag Srivastava, thank you so much for being with us.